Misandry is the hatred of, contempt for, or prejudice against men or boys. Misandrous or misandrist can be used as adjectival forms of the word. Misandry can manifest itself in numerous ways, including sexual discrimination, denigration of men, violence against men, sexual objectification of men. Etymology <inaudible> 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 Misandry is formed from the Greek misos, miso, hatred, and aner, andros, aner gen, andros, man. Use of the word can be found as far back as the 19th century, including an 1871 use in the Spectator magazine. It appeared in Merriam Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, 11th ed., in 1952. Translation of the French, misandry, to the German, mannerhass, hatred of men, is recorded in 1803. Misandry is parallel in form to misogyny. Topic: <inaudible> Male disposability. Activist Warren Farrell has written of his views on how men are uniquely marginalized in what he calls their disposability, the manner in which the most dangerous occupations, notably soldiering and mining, were historically performed exclusively by men and remain so today. In his book, The Myth of Male Power, Farrell argues that patriarchal societies do not make rules to benefit men at the expense of women. Farrell contends that nothing is more telling about who has benefited from men's rules than life expectancy, which is lower in males, and suicide rates, which are higher. <laughs> Within feminist movements Academic Alice Eccles, in her 1989 book Daring to be Bad, Radical Feminism in America, 1967–1975, argued that the radical feminist Valerie Solanas, best known for her attempted murder of Andy Warhol in 1968, displayed an extreme level of misandry compared to other radical feminists of the time in her tract The Scum Manifesto. Eccles stated, Solanas's unabashed misandry, especially her belief in men's biological inferiority, her endorsement of relationships between independent women, and her dismissal of sex as the refuge of the mindless contravened the sort of radical feminism which prevailed in most women's groups across the country. Andrea Dworkin criticized the biological determinist strand in radical feminism that, in 1977, she found, with increasing frequency in feminist circles, which echoed the views of Valerie Solanas that males are biologically inferior to women and violent by nature, requiring a gendercide to allow for the emergence of a new Ubermensch woman. The author Bell Hooks has discussed the issue of man hating during the early period of women's liberation as a reaction to patriarchal oppression and women who have had bad experiences with men in non feminist social movements. She has also criticized separatist strands of feminism as reactionary for promoting the notion that men are inherently immoral, inferior, and unable to help end sexist oppression or benefit from feminism. In Feminism is for Everybody, Hooks laments the fact that feminists who critiqued anti-male bias in the early women's movement never gained mainstream media attention and that our theoretical work critiquing the demonization of men as the enemy did not change the perspective of women who were anti-male. Hooks has theorized previously that this demonization led to an unnecessary rift between the men's movement and the women's movement. Although Hooks doesn't name individual separatist theorists, Mary Daly's utopian vision of a world in which men and heterosexual women have been eliminated is an extreme example of this tendency. Daly argued that sexual equality between men and women was not possible and that women, due to their superior capacities, should rule men. Yet later, in an interview, Daly argued, if life is to survive on this planet, there must be a decontamination of the earth. I think this will be accompanied by an evolutionary process that will result in a drastic reduction of the population of males." Paul Nathanson and Catherine K. Young argued that, "...ideological feminism," as opposed to, "...egalitarian feminism," has imposed misandry on culture. Their 2001 book, Spreading Misandry, analyzed, Pop cultural artifacts and productions from the 1990s, from movies to greeting cards for what they considered to be pervasive messages of hatred toward men. Legalizing Misandry, 2005, the second in the series, gave similar attention to laws in North America. Wendy McElroy, an individualist feminist, wrote in 2001 that some feminists 
have redefined the view of the movement of the opposite sex as a hot anger toward men that seems to have turned into a cold hatred. She argued it was a misandrist position to consider men, as a class, to be irreformable or rapists. In a 2016 article, author and journalist Kathy Young described a current cycle of misandry in feminism. This cycle, she explains, includes the use of the term mansplaining and other neologisms using man as a derogatory prefix. The term mansplaining, according to feminist writer Rebecca Solnit, was coined soon after the appearance in 2008 of her essay Men Explain Things to Me. Topic. Public attitudes Men's rights activists and other masculinist groups have criticized modern laws concerning divorce, domestic violence, and rape as examples of institutional misandry. In a study of 488 college students regarding ambivalent sexism towards men, researchers found that women who did not identify as feminists were more likely to be hostile towards men than self identified feminists, but also more likely to hold benevolent views towards men. In a study of 503 self identified heterosexual females, social psychologists found an association between insecure attachment styles and women's hostile sexism towards men. Religious studies professors Paul Nathanson and Catherine Young examined the institutionalization of misandry in the public sphere in their 2001 three-book series Beyond the Fall of Man, which refers to misandry as a form of prejudice and discrimination that has become institutionalized in North American society. Writing the same problem that long prevented mutual respect between Jews and Christians, the teaching of contempt, now prevents mutual respect between men and women. <laughs> Asymmetry with misogyny Sociologist Alan G. Johnson argues in The Gender Knot, unraveling our patriarchal legacy that accusations of man-hating have been used to put down feminists and to shift attention onto men, reinforcing a male-centered culture. Johnson asserts that culture offers no comparable anti-male ideology to misogyny and that, "...people often confuse men as individuals with men as a dominant and privileged category of people," and that, Given the reality of women's oppression, male privilege, and men's enforcement of both, it's hardly surprising that every woman should have moments where she resents or even hates men. Mark A. Willette argues in International Encyclopedia of Men and Masculinities that, misandry lacks the systemic, transhistoric, institutionalized, and legislated antipathy of misogyny. In his view, assuming a parallel between misogyny and misandry overly simplifies relations of gender and power. Anthropologist David D. Gilmore also argues that misogyny is a near universal phenomenon and that there is no male equivalent to misogyny, further defending manifestations of perceived misandry as not hatred of men's traditional male role and a culture of machismo. He argues, misandry is different from the intensely ad feminum aspect of misogyny that targets women no matter what they believe or do. In literature Ancient Greek literature Classics professor Froma Zeitlin of Princeton University discussed misandry in her article titled Patterns of Gender in Aeschylean Drama, Seven Against Thebes and the Danaid Trilogy." She writes, The most significant point of contact, however, between Aetiocles and the suppliant Danaids is, in fact, their extreme positions with regard to the opposite sex, the misogyny of Aetiocles' outburst against all women of whatever variety say, 181-202 has its counterpart in the seeming misandry of the Danaids, who although opposed to their Egyptian cousins in particular marriage with them is incestuous, they are violent men often extend their objections to include the race of males as a whole and view their cause as a passionate contest between the sexes cf. Sue, 29, 393, 487, 818, 951. Topic: Shakespeare. Literary critic Harold Bloom argued that even though the word misandry is relatively unheard of in literature, it is not hard to find implicit, even explicit, misandry. 
In reference to the works of Shakespeare Bloom argued I cannot think of one instance of misogyny whereas I would argue that misandry is a strong element. Shakespeare makes perfectly clear that women in general have to marry down and that men are narcissistic and not to be trusted and so forth. On the whole, he gives us a darker vision of human males than human females. Topic Modern literature Racialized misandry occurs in both high and low culture and literature. For instance, African American men have often been disparagingly portrayed as either infantile or as eroticized and hyper masculine. Depending on prevailing cultural stereotypes, critic of mainstream feminism Christina Hoff Summers has described Eve Ensler's play The Vagina Monologues as misandric in that there are no admirable males. The play presents a rogues gallery of male brutes, sadists, child molesters, genital mutilators, gang rapists, and hateful little boys, which she finds out of step with the reality that most men are not brutes. They are not oppressors. Julie M. Thompson, a feminist author, connects misandry with envy of men, in particular, penis envy, a term coined by Sigmund Freud in 1908, in his theory of female sexual development. Nancy Kong has discussed the misandric impulse in relation to the works of Toni Morrison, in his book, Gender and Judaism, The Transformation of Tradition. Harry Broad, a professor of philosophy and humanities in the Department of Philosophy and Religion at the University of Northern Iowa, writes, in the introduction to the great comic book Heroes, Jules Pfeiffer writes that this is Superman's joke on the rest of us. Clark is Superman's vision of what other men are really like. We are scared, incompetent, and powerless, particularly around women. Though Pfeiffer took the joke good-naturedly, a more cynical response would see here the Kryptonian's misanthropy, his misandry embodied in Clark and his misogyny in his wish that Lois be enamored of Clark much like Oberon takes out hostility toward Titania by having her fall in love with an ass in Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream. Topic see also topic References topic Further reading Benatar, D. 2012, the Second Sexism, Discrimination Against Men and Boys, Malden, Wiley Blackwell, Hooks, Bell, 2005, The Will to Change, Men, Masculinity and Love, New York, Washington Square Press. Summers, Christina Hoff, 1995, first published 1994. Who Stole Feminism? How Women Have Betrayed Women. Simon & Schuster. ISBN 0-684-80156-6. Farrell, Warren 2001, first published 1993. The Myth of Male Power, Why Men Are the Disposable Sex. Berkeley Trade. ISBN 0-425-18144-8. Ferguson, Francis, Block, R. Howard 1989. Misogyny, Misandry, and Misanthropy. Berkeley, University of California Press. ISBN 0-520-06546-8. Levine, Judith My Enemy, My Love, Man-Hating and Ambivalence in Women's Lives. Da Capo Press. ISBN 1-56025-568-4. McNamara, J. R. Media and Male Identity, The Making and Remaking of Men, Palgrave Macmillan, New York. McElroy, Wendy Sexual Correctness, The Gender Feminist Attack on Women. Harper Paperbacks. New York, McFarland & Company. ISBN 0-7864-1144-9. Sinnott, Anthony 2009, Rethinking Men, Heroes, Villains and Victims, Ashgate Publishing. ISBN 1409491951. Smith, William A., Yoso, Tara J., Solorzano, Daniel G. 2007, Racial Primes and Black Misandry on Historically White Campuses, Toward Critical Race Accountability in Educational Administration, Educational Administration Quarterly, Vol. 43 No. 5, pp. 559-585. Rosenblum, Darren 2010, Beyond Victimization and Misandry, International Journal of Law in Context, Volume 6, No. 1, pp. 114-116. Nathanson, Paul, Young, Catherine R. 2001. Spreading Misandry, The Teaching of Contempt for Men in Popular Culture. Harper Paperbacks. Montreal, McGill-Queens University Press. ISBN 0-7735-3099-1. Nathanson, Paul, Young, Catherine R. 2006. Legalizing Misandry, From Public Shame to Systemic Discrimination Against Men. Montreal, McGill-Queens University Press.
ISBN 0 7735 2862 8. Catherine K. Young, Paul Nathanson. Sanctifying Misandry Goddess Ideology and the Fall of Man. MQUP. ISBN 978 0 7735 8544 7. Nathanson, Paul, Young, Catherine K. 2012, Misandry and Emptiness, Masculine Identity in a Toxic Cultural Environment, New Male Studies, An International Journal, Vol. 1, No. 1, pp. 4–18. Schwartz, Howard 2003. The Revolt of the Primitive, An Inquiry into the Roots of Political Correctness Revised ed. Transaction Publishers. ISBN 0-7658-0537-5. Nathanson, Paul and Catherine Young, 2009, Coming of Age as a Villain, What Every Boy Needs to Know in a Misandric World, Thymus, Journal of Boyhood Studies, Vol. 3, p. 2, pp. 155-177. Villar, Esther. The Manipulated Man. New York, Farrar, Strauss and Giroux, 1972. Topic external links Bailey, Susan, Summers, Christina Hoff, 2001. Misandry in the Classroom. The Hudson Review. The Hudson Review, Inc. 54 1, 148-54. doi, 10.2307, JSTOR 3852834. My rough and tumble first grader, Mark, came home from school yesterday and nonchalantly told me a story about his day that set me shivering leader, Richard 2007. Misandry, from the Dictionary of Fools. Adonis Mirror. Retrieved 28 December 2007, article critical of the use of the term Wilson, Robert Anton April 1996. Androphobia, the only respectable bigotry. The Backlash. Shameless Men Press. Retrieved 28 December 2007. Layoff Men, Lessing tells feminists.